This idea came about when my wife and I were in a small bookstore in a theater, and my wife showed me this book. And the book is called The Map of Good Memories. And I stood there in the bookshop, and I read the book to myself. And I bought it immediately. I thought, I can take this book and blend the ideas from this book with the ideas of the psychology of Alfred Adler. And I thought, I can do this, and perhaps I can do workshops and help other people understand themselves and their lives through the use of this book combined with the psychology of Alfred Adler. I will combine them by looking at early memories. Adler in his psychology believed that we as individuals form our lifestyle, our particular way that we behave, we form it as a small child, age four, five, six, seven. Adler believed four or five. And this book talks about making a map of memories before age 10. So I thought, aha, we can take the memories that we've formulated in various locations in our lives before we're age 10 and look for the pot, look for two things in the memories. Look for the positive things. Actually, look for three things in the memory. Look for positive things, look for social resources, and look for lessons that we've learned in five different areas of our lives. Yes, we all have memories that are not so good, and we have memories that are, are bad. We also have memories that are on the positive side of life, and Al Alfred Adler was characterized as the first positive psychologist that he maintained uh, in Romanian. He, he maintained an attitude of usherel, of speranza, of courage, those were some ideas that he believed in very strongly, and he believed in that we are looking to overcome and looking to be positive within ourselves so we can help others to have a better life. Well, they will benefit by drawing a map of their memories, and each participant will get a sheet of paper like this and to make their map, their personal map. And like our personalities, no map will be the same. And on the map, there will be five, I will ask participants to, to locate five specific things in their lives on the map. And these are, the first one is your home, the casa where you grew up, the home where you grew up. That's one before age 10. Two would be the school that you attended. Three is a is a friend's home. Fourth is a place that you played outside. And the fifth is any place that, any other place that was important to you. And you make this map on this sheet of paper and then we begin the exploration of each one of those five areas and how they contributed to your life in a positive way. They will understand it through two ways, three ways. One, by the drawing of the map. And secondly, by answering some questions that define lifestyle. And the four questions are like this, or the four ideas that participants will respond to is when they think of their casa, how do they describe themselves? How do they describe others in their casa? How do they describe events in, that happened in the, in the home? And what did they conclude? And they can do that by writing, and they can't do it wrong. It's a way to take the ideas that are in the head and in the heart and put them on paper where we can see them. We hear ourselves Think, we hear ourselves think about them, and now we're making a map so we can see it, and then we're writing responses to, I am, others are, events in my life are, and I have decided. And we'll do that for five different areas to get a total look to, uh, to the positive side and the lessons learned from when I was a child, under the age of 10. 
Also, what I would like the hemp participants do, if they draw their casa, or if they put their casa on the map, I'd like to have them write down who lived in their casa, what memories they have about the casa, uh, anything that they have that is on the positive side of life from that place. Yes, so one of my favorite words in Adlerian psychology that I learned in Romania, and this is my 14th trip, I think, to this beautiful country filled with beautiful people, is the word usherel. Go calmly, go slowly, and be kind to yourself and others as you do the work, as you do the writing, as you draw the map. Go slowly, be kind to yourself. Yes, it's the first one that I've done, and it's the first one I've done where we've combined, vi second one I've done, where we combine visual, Auditor, auditory and kinesthetic ideas and we're going to we're going to draw or make a map that's the kinesthetic we're going to see the map that's the visual we're going to talk about the map that's the auditory and we're using those to look at how we develop uh, personal strengths social resources and lessons we learned from our early childhood that we're still using today whether we be adolescent, or whether we be adult, or whether we be aging. We look back at the things we do today, they probably have an anchor in our childhood. Adler believed that there are, that we are all social beings, and that we are looking for a way to belong, and a way to be helpful to ourselves and others. And he called that idea Gemeinschaftsgefühl. Adler spoke German, and it means a sense of community and a sense of belonging and doing good for the community and for our children and for their children and for their children's children. We look at three possible ideas. We look at what are our character strengths or our traits that we have identified when we say I am. We also look at, for example, when we look in our family, who would be helpful in my family in helping me solve a problem? Who would be helpful from my school? Or what can I learn? Uh, do I have friends now that can help me with my solutions? Do I need time? Do I need time alone? That's the idea of a place that I played. I can gather ideas from that and also all of us have a place, and I hear many people from Romania say, I love to go to my grandparents' home, and that might be a special place. And we can reflect on, who do I have that's older that can help me now? How can I solve my problems by looking at my strengths, by looking at my social connections, by looking at my possibilities from my childhood? And one of the things that, that Adler stressed is that we have the courage to be imperfect and that what I say to participants is you can't do it wrong and you will not be criticized. No one is going to judge you. It is yours. It is your personal. And if you want to share it with someone else, then you must, it would be important or be helpful if you would ask them, to not judge what I say, just listen. We're going to practice some of that so we can hear ourselves talk about what we have created. Adler was a student for a while, not a student, but he was, he was in a group with Sigmund Freud. And there are three fathers of modern day uh, psychology. Uh, Alfred Adler, Sigmund Freud, and Carl Jung. And Adler says there, he thought, he came up with this idea that there are five ways to understand ourselves. One is through birth order or family constellation, who is in our family. Two is through early memories. Three, daydreams and night dreams. Four are any childhood challenges, any physical problems, 
any emotional problems in the family. And the fifth are exogenous factors, anything that happened in our families that we were not prepared for. He thought those were five doorways to understanding. I have chosen for this work only one doorway into understanding, and that's the doorway of understanding our early memories from a positive point of view. We are not looking for mistakes. We are not looking for pathology. We are not looking to relive unfortunate or uh, ugly experiences. We are looking for the positive uh, aspects of our families, of our schools, of the community that we lived in, of the children that we, of where we played and how we played. And they're also said that if you want to understand a child, one of the easiest ways to understand a child is to watch the child play. So one of the things that we have in here is a, is a specific area about a child's play. Where did you play outside? And what did, who did you play with? Who was there? What did you do? How did you respond uh, when you were playing a game? Or playing or walking in the forest with a friend like I did the other day? When I was a little boy, one of the places that I went to play was in a grove of trees. There were trees there. And I was always looking to discover. I was always curious. And I would go there with some friends, with some neighbor friends. And I would go there with my cousins. I would go explore a creek or I would go looking for things. When I was here in Romania, it's happened twice that I've been here. Once I was near Severin, no, no, Drobert, Ternus, Severin. And when I was there, some friends and I went to the mountains and we were exploring. We were walking like I did in childhood. I was walking with my friends and we saw a wildflower. And my friend, I said, what is that? And he said, oh, that's a wildflower. And they're fairly rare. And I asked him, I said, would you take a picture of it so I could send it to my wife? She likes wildflowers and she likes the mountains and she likes being in Romania. She's been here twice. So I could send it, I could send it to her. The second thing that happened here, I was in Pieternims. Another friend and I went for a walk and we walked in the woods and we saw yellow flowers, yellow flowers, yellow flowers. It all looked the same. And then there was a white flower. And he told me, my friend told me, that the white flower was only in April and it was an Easter flower. I asked him if he would take a picture of it so I could send it also to my wife so that she could see that and appreciate and I could share with what I had done with someone in my and that I was married to, but also someone that I cared very deeply about, and I knew what she was interested in, and I wanted to share that with her. So the experience from childhood of going in the, into the trees and exploring, or going by a river and exploring, is something that I have done since I've been a little boy, and that carried into my two experiences here in Romania, and that, there's 65 years difference in age. The first thing happened when I was under the age of 10, and now I'm 75. And history has a way of changing and repeating itself. So we're looking for the connection to our behavior today to see how it's connected to our past and influence to our past. We can also change our memories if we want to, because we are creative individuals. One of the things we can do with early recollections, because we are creative and we are clever in a variety of ways, and we are also seeking to connect, we can rewrite our early recollections. We, we have no positive proof that our early recollections are actually what happened. Alfred Adler has an early recollection where he when he was growing up in Vienna, in the suburbs of Vienna, he walked by a cemetery. And he had that as an early memory. As an adult, he went back to that same neighborhood and there was no cemetery to be found. 
So sometimes our memories are our own creation, and because they are our own creation, we can change them. And we can change anything in the memory that we choose to. That, and then we can have a new way of viewing our past and a new way of proceeding in the future. Yes, and we can change ourselves. We can change one action or one thing that we did in that memory. Just change one thing that we did in the memory and that will change the perspective. It may be a small change, nonetheless it will be a change. Yes, this is not a specific memory. Ah, I, I can think of one. When I was a little boy, my mother's uncle and I went to the village barber shop. And the barber, before he cut our before he cut my mother's uncle's hair and my hair, he took us out behind his barber shop and showed us a pet that he had. And then we went and got our hair cut. That's an early memory that I have. What that might translate into now is that to when I go to see someone that I must I must be interested or no, I must be interested, but I am usually interested in their lives. And how is your life? And how is your life beyond what you do? You may be a barber, or you may be a therapist, or you may be an accountant, or you may be a shepherd. I want to know about your life and what you're interested in. That's the curiosity and the wanting to connect with others more than knowing the name and the occupation and where they live. I want to know... Uh, about you and your interests and your life. And I think I discovered that when I was a small boy. Absolutely. Adler's idea was this, that we learn by conversation and we learn by observing two people talking to each other in a directed, formally organized way. And I will do that. I will talk with members of the audience. I will have them come up and sit beside me, and we will have a conversation about their map. And I will talk with someone about their school. I will talk with someone about their family. I will talk about someone with their play. I will talk with someone about their friends. I will talk with someone about a special place to them where they were a child, when they were a child. And that will be so that others can listen and they can learn from me. And they can also learn from the person who is talking about their lives. Adler says and believes that we are equals, that we are all social equals, and we treat each other with respect and dignity. And then we are learning in a respectful, dignified way by using demonstration. I have been studying Adlerian psychology 45 years. And I studied it as a graduate student and became really interested in Adlerian psychology back in the early 1970s and have studied the theory and have learned with many, many people how to apply the theory to life, how to apply the theory to work, how to apply the theory to how I take care of myself, how I interact with, with my family and my friends, how I interact uh, spiritually, how I connect with the spiritual world, and how I connect in intimate relationships. And I've studied the way that Adler did his work and studied how other Adlerians have done their work and attempted to be encouraging, theory-based, and having the courage to connect and to also make mistakes and to apologize if I make a mistake or to start again. We all have second chances in life.
I first learned about Adler through Rudolf Dreikers. I saw him once in person, and I wasn't sure what he was doing. And then I went to a, I went to graduate school in the state of Wyoming, and a man studied Dreikers and Adler, and the light began to turn on. Now the light did not go on like this. The light went on very slowly, very slowly. And the light continues to go, to grow and grow and grow. I recommend those things. I recommend getting outside. Aha! One of the things that I did in the last year and a half, I stepped on the scale January 1st of 2016, 2017, and did not like what I saw. And we can change. So I went to the gymnasium, and I have lost 10% of my body weight, and I am much stronger now than I've ever been in my, in my adulthood, in my late adulthood or, or aging. And my energy comes from that, and also from working with people, and learning, and working, and, and also having a full, uh, full and loving marriage. And I also want to share something else that I, I learned in Romania, that I do in my office. In my office, every morning when I go into my office and work, I light two candles. For many, many years, I lit only one candle. And then I was one small candle. And now for the last 10 or 12 years, when I go into the, my office, I light two small candles. And I learned that in Romania. I light one candle for the living and one candle for the dead. And that helps me remember that I need to respect my past, I need to live in the present with the people that are, that are living, and I also need to create a better world in the future for the people that are going to be here when the candle, when the other candle is lit for me.